Dep This Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK. My co-host name is Bricky. He's the one with all the Warhammer knowledge. He's the one that's going to be telling us all of the most ridiculous things, hence the name Adeptus Ridiculous, for today's episode of the podcast. But before we get into that, if you enjoy the podcast and you want to consider maybe supporting the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. You'll get access to our Discord, which is always popping. Bloopers if they happen. Uh, there's a new HD poster out. <laughs> it's Latarisarin abs. It's my new phone wallpaper. It's pretty great. So definitely uh, consider supporting us over at patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. And uh, I, th- I think that's it for me. Uh, Bricky merch and book club, which should be soon, right? It should be. Uh, the book club, I think we're recording it like tomorrow or something, pretty soon, um, <laughs> is on Soul Hunter, the first of the Night Lords trilogy. Make sure you read it, because it's amazing. Uh, and also, merchandise, Orchidate.com, or check it out in the description. We should get some good quotes around that should have new merch for the next episode. Oh, um, Should, I okay. hope, if it's done in time. Uh, if it's not, then one more week. But maybe soon. But yeah, check out the merch. I, I, I don't suppose Good. I can get any spoilers on what the new merch is, could I? Because I don't know what it I, is. I mean, I, I'll tell you after, but but not. Okay. I, okay. I don't want to. I don't want to get people hyped and then it doesn't happen. Okay. And then I have to wait another week because that'd be unfortunate. Um, well, also, screw, screw everyone listening because I'm gonna find out. Ha! He's gonna he's gonna get to know. Yeah. You gotta know something because you never know what the episode is. That's that's true. It's it's very it's very it's a normal move for me to be in the dark. That's just sort of my daily, uh, you know. I'm very accustomed to being in the dark, knowing nothing. So don't worry, it is good. It's good. I'm yeah. I'm glad we're on the same page. Also, I do find it humorous that unironically, our Latara poster is probably the best poster we've done so far. It's really good. It's actually I, really good. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's my phone wallpaper. It's not a joke. It's not a meme. It's yeah. It's, it's it, I mean, nice. I mean, that's a little weeby, but you know, I guess that's okay. Hello, that's that's called on brand. A little weeby for me, really. really? Okay, all right. All right do, you, fine. do you even know me? All right, fair. Are we even friends? I, I, I guess, I guess not. Apparently, I got this all fucking mixed up. I thought I was Ugh. with people of class. You thought I had class? <sighs> I mean, you are building You're thousand suns. That's kind of cool. That's true. You're not and they're, they're like... getting the uh, they're getting the hex firebox too, aren't they? Yep, that's coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Anyway, on a topic that has nothing to do with Thousand Suns or Grey Knights, Damn today it. we have a couple things we gotta we gotta show. Apparently, uh, Shy, you had something that you wanted to show us. Ah, uh, that's right, she did. She had a, a, a fan thing. Uh oh. Oh. Oh shit! I'll, I'll I'll click on it too to see what what this is. Oh, is this the new intro? Oh shit! Yo, there's drums now. Oh, it well, it's like super. Well, <laughs> it's it's hype. <laughs> yeah, it is very hype. It's like super orchestral now. Oh, that's that's pretty great. Wait, fan of the podcast by the name Bailey Reed took our theme song and entirely remade it by ear in epic orchestral style. It is not a remix or whatever. It's entirely a new track. Oh, that's fucking impressive! Holy shit! Well, he, it's just by ear he did it. That's or oh, she. Uh, the name is Bailey. Oh. I, don't, I don't know. I guess it could be both. Oh um, my bad. Whatever. Them. We are they, progressive on this podcast. They made it, and they did a very impressive job. Uh, so big ups to Bailey Reed because that's that's super dope. Yeah, I, I mean I'll. Yeah, that, that's. I hope we use it for the opening of this intro. I hope. I hope yeah. people uh, hear it and then they're like, "Oh, that's new." Um, also, in the response of a fantastic episode yet last week on the Officio Assassinorum, we got a incredible video uh, made from for us on Twitter. I'm gonna let Shy cut to the video. Oh no. <laughs> So, so I'm assuming I'm assuming she she played it. 
you know what's you know what's great about that one? What's so that? not only like there's the orange kid with the drill abbot hammer, but yeah. not only is that good, but then you, he animated the default dancing commissars, <laughs> but then he went the additional the additional way to echo like a like a loudspeaker oh, the chug yeah, jug yeah, yeah. song and then add children crying. It is the perfect 40k video. Yep, it is. It's it's memes. It's depression. It's horror. It's grim dark. Spot on. I don't. I don't get it because I don't Fortnite. But uh, I, I know I heard Chug Jug and then immediately uh, hand in face, or oh, hands you, in face. Cause I, I can't believe you don't know. All right. Anyway, uh, speaking of of thing, uh, <laughs> D- Dean Kamen. Wow! Great segue. <laughs> vroom, vroom vroom. Dean vroom, Kamen. Vroom. Uh, speaking of speed, today we're talking about the white scars. Oh shit! Yeah, we're gonna do the motorcycle Mongolians. Hell yeah! Well, specifically, we're doing like we have been, which is Primark, then oh, right, faction. Right, right, right. So today we are talking about yes, motorcycle Mongolians. That's that's actually a really good way to 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 refer to them. I never because yeah. it's MM. I don't. Wow, that's great. Have you done that before? I don't know about that. Motorcycle yep. Mongolians. Every now and then I come up with a gym. Let's go. That's not bad. So we're talking about Jagatai Khan today. Uh, it has mm-hmm. surprisingly been requested, which, well, there's lots of requests lately. People really want us to do Blood Angels. They want us to do Dark Angels or like, yeah. um, they want us to talk about Percherabo, that fucking douche. Uh, they want <laughs> us to talk about lots of stuff. But there's always been like this nice little group of people who really wanted White Scars. And okay. it's funny because I always kind of forgot about White Scars. Okay. A lot, a lot of people do. They just kind of forget it because you look at um, yes, yeah, so GW. But you look at like the Space Marine Codex, and you're like Ultramarines, yeah. Imperial Fists, Salamanders, Iron Hands, like very prominent factions. Yeah, and they're like, oh yeah, that's right, White Scars. You know, Space Wolves, Blood Angels, like very, very prominent factions. And people always kind of forget about White Scars, which I find funny now that I've read about them because it's actually mm-hmm. lore accurate. <laughs> that people forget about them yeah actually i'm actually kind of surprised like so i i knew that today was one that people had been asking for so in my head i was like okay i'm gonna pretend to be surprised when he says blood angels because <laughs> uh, i had seen that one get requested i didn't i don't think i've ever seen anyone request a white scar before i'm happy they, about they... it because they're really cool but yeah i i was genuinely assuming that today was just it's blood angels time let's talk about vampires but pleasantly uh pleasantly swerved Swer- oh oh there's gonna be lots of swerving in this episode <laughs> <laughs> i made up drifting. for my dean came in earlier excellent yep. mm-hmm. well um yeah we need the drum <laughs> we need the drum set we gotta get the drum set back out yep get that drum oh. set dry so jagatai khan the primarch of the fifth legion this time around mm-hmm. uh he hails from a world known as chagoris now oh. interestingly enough unlike uh angron mortarian curs mainly the chaos chaos guys his mm-hmm. upbringing is actually the boring part oh and it's actually his time during the heresy and in the great crusade that make him interesting mm-hmm. i think his upbringing is actually rather rather boring <laughs> not gonna lie it it seems to me that if a Primarch stays loyalist, they probably had a boring childhood. Nothing really happened. They just, hooray, I'm not on a death world. And the ones that went traitor had just awful childhoods, like Angron, where he was like a fucking slave, and he had to fight in slave combat. And then all he had to watch all of his people die when Emps just teleported him up. Yeah, most of the time it tends to have really bad situations. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, granted, you know, Gilliman didn't have a bad time at all, but Gilliman got interesting because his his post his reawakening is just like so depressed. Yep, that's what makes him so cool. Like, I think the Ultramarines are kind of boring because I've determined that they're like they're like the Yankees. Of... Yeah, they're the poster boys. Yeah, they're the franchise. They get all the attention. They get all the money, and it's like ugh, they're boring. Gilliman is just so cool because, like, once he reawakens, it's like, oh, my God, we're all dumb. Holy shit. How do I deal with this? I can't just kill you all. Fuck. You get a lot better character development when the good boy is thrown into the bad situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so Chagoris, 
Naturally, we all know what happens with the Primarchs in the capsules. Yeet! They're gone. <laughs> Um, now, Chagoris was actually a fertile world. It was very large. It had huge plains and mountains and seas. I think it was all located on one big continent. Mm-hmm. And it, so it kind of had, well, you know, it, it looked like Mongolia, you know, it was, <laughs> obviously. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's makes, the theme. Yeah, it yeah. makes plenty of sense. It was a perfectly good world in terms of temperature and, and all that stuff. It was, nothing was particularly weird about it. No, um, no, yeah, it wasn't like Nostromo, and it wasn't like <laughs> perpetual uh, darkness, yeah. or or barbarous with Mortarian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the planet had technology similar to like late Renaissance period, because the Age of Strife oh. fucked everything up. So they right. were back into the point of like horses and pikes. Okay, they were going like way back, because uh, because you, you got to so do the. Like... No technology then. There's there's just... very little. Okay. So you gotta just, you gotta go with like the sticks um, together to make fire. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Like flint and Ooh. steel or whatever. Like like they had they had armor, but you know they they really want to sell that Mongolian vibe. So you know, they're going back to the Fair time enough. where they were really big and conquerors and all that. You know, mm-hmm. good old Genghis Khan time frame. Okay. Um. So he was found by Ong Khan. That's a really hard thing to pronounce. O N G, and the last name is Khan who was the chieftain or the Khan of a small tribe. So there, the entire planet was mainly conquered by a feudal aristocracy, because it's always aristocracies in Warhammer. Um, sure. The leader was known as the Palatine, which I think is kind of strange because they released a new sisters of battle model called the Palatine, which is just a little weird. Uh, yeah, but, it's a little strange. A little weird, but oh well. Uh, in the Palatine had his big ass empire with his big ass armies. And west of the, his empire was a thing called the Empty Quarter, which is this giant barren grassland with tons of different warring tribes, nomadic armies. Like it's the giant plains of nothingness where tribes will kind of fight each other away from the empire. Giant plains of nothing sounds sounds like Warframe. Sounds like a Warframe open world. <laughs> I, a, I, I couldn't help it. It's all right. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't. They're Plain, all like that. Planes of Ida Long. More like, I can't, I don't want to be here. <laughs> oh, Shai and, said it sounds like a Warframe release schedule. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up, um, true. Sorry, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. You're, you're, uh, <laughs> Ong Khan was the chieftain, or the Khan, of a small tribe out there in the empty quarter. Mm-hmm. And after being raised for a bit, his dad was just eventually killed by some rival, you know, tribes. Yikes. Uh, classic, everyone's dad dies in fucking Warhammer. Yeah. Um, so, how else are you going to become a bloodthirsty warrior? Yeah, how, how else? Well, I mean, he's going to be raised, but... Well, he was, yeah. he was raised kind of, you know, I don't want to say savage. He's not like Lehman Russ, but he's <laughs> very much raised as a warrior because sure. he was raised in this tribe of warriors and then eventually a rival tribe killed his dad and then Jagatai went to go avenge him and so he rode to the rival tribe and he raised it to the ground he literally anakin skywalkered it it specifically states Ooh. in the wiki he killed all the men the women and the children <laughs> and then took the tribe leader's head on a pike and put it on his tent damn and Does he hates sand too I guess he died. <laughs> Not maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I mean, he raised the place to the ground, so you know. He, he killed oh, all the he the men, the women, ch- everyone. Um, so slaughtered them like they were animals. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Fucking, I don't. I don't like the. I don't like the situation we're in, where Jagatai Khan is just Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, he's way too cool to be dopey as Anakin Skywalker. Gets on his fucking. Gets on his fucking jet bike. It's like this is where oh the fun. Oh my god, be. he's even a pod racer. Oh no, he's even a pod racer. <laughs> he's got the oh the fuck, mind. he's Anakin. <laughs> he's... No, he's Anakin. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cursed. Oh, he's he's Anakin. Fuck, no. <laughs> god damn it. Oh god. Greatest greatest revelation ever. <laughs> this is outrageous. It's unfair. <laughs> 
How can no, you how can you be a Primarch and not be promoted <laughs> to the rank of <laughs> of master? <laughs> Uh, um, um, what the fuck? Um, uh, oh shit! <laughs> His right. dad died. He raised everything. Dad to the ground. died. Yes. Yeah. He, um. So, uh, basically, his whole shtick was he really disliked the tribal infighting, mm -hmm. and so he would attempt to unite all the tribes in the eastern quarter of the area. So the tribes he eventually conquered were absorbed into what he called the Talascar Confederacy, which is just. This is just big words for Caesar's Legion of fa yeah. Fallout. Um, I'm not even kidding. This is literally Caesar's Legion. He made military service mandatory, and he took the tribes, and he split them up and merged them with other tribes to remove their differences and remove blood feuds and kind of make them one homogenous group. Smart. Which is literally what Caesar's Legion does in Fallout yeah. New Vegas. He specifically I mean, states, like, one homogenous thing that obliterates the culture of what it conquers. It's exactly yep. what he does. Smart. That's smart. That's what you, that's kind of what you want. You don't you don't want a shitload of infighting. You just want unity. You, well, you want them to you want them to not of. kill each other anymore. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You want them going against the enemy, not themselves. Point being, uh, this stuff happened. Eventually, a hunting band from the Palatine Empire came to go get him. Uh, or just it was like a, it was no it was a hunting bam and they came across the Khan's tribe and a lot they killed a lot of Khan's men but then the Khan killed all of them and then put their heads on pikes and sent them back and was like this ain't your 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 place no more dude which made this this guy really mad and he sent this giant army to go try to take him out and that was kind of where they started getting into their speed because then what they did is they just basically ran circles around them with horses and just fired arrows at them, never, never endingly. Oof. And I was like, ha ha, can't catch me, fucking <laughs> losers. And, and killed him. Yeah, they killed yeah. a massive amount of his army and then the guy ran away and kind of hid. Mm -hmm. So this came the long process of taking over the planet. And then he basically gave every single area tribe or or city the same ultimatum it was surrender or die and most surrendered some didn't and those that didn't died um uh, well yeah pretty I mean, simple he was very those clear are the cut. options he gave like <laughs> yeah that's actually really good fan art of jagatai oh that's, shit i thought that was an actual picture that's that's very um uh very true to like the ethnicity and i find that humbling it's 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 nice I, when they do a good job with making it like you know like i looked over accurate. and i thought the the picture she posted i was like oh that's that's got to be from like some uh some fantasy show like it's an actual picture of a dude or like it's someone cosplaying it's like nope that's that's just uh pen to paper he's that's, fucking cool looking goddamn yeah that um super slick but anyway um i anyway so basically at this point he was just dabbing on on cities he was just going around, like, taking everything he could. And eventually, he finally got to the Palatine himself. And he went to his city, and he was like, Hey, bring me the Palatine's head on a spike, and I'll I'll let your city live. You, you'll surrender. And the ah. city was like, okay. And they went to the dude and <laughs> put his head on the spike and gave it to him. And he's like, cool. All right, we're good now. And then he put it on his tent. I mean, when 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 you see what Jagatai Khan has been able to do up until that point, if you're if you're like serving the Palatine or whatever, and they're like, yeah, if you if you kill him and give me his head on a pike, I'll let you. Like, there probably wasn't even a moment of hesitation. They're like, yep, <laughs> yep, goodbye, Palatine, because this is mm -mm. I I ain't gonna let him flay me alive well i guess Jack that's that's the curse thing that's the curse thing right that's the terror tactics but yeah, it's, yeah. no jagatai would would definitely go on a slaughter but he would not do it he they don't like revel in it mm -hmm. uh, well, well we can talk more about that in a moment but um like basically he, does it he has to yeah right? he does it because it's the warrior's path he, he's very mm -hmm. like honorable he he feels like the the use of battle is not to satiate like a savage desire for battle. Like he likes to fight, but he, he likes the honor it gives him. He likes the feeling of, of a conqueror, of mm -hmm. conquering. Um, he's he's not the like the guy with Lehman Russ where he's just fucking stoked to be swinging a sword. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I, he it's the joy of winning. 
the joy of of honorable battle um and not like tau honorable where it's really you know yeah. weeby well, and stuff because up, up until this point i was gonna say he kind of sounds like he sounds almost almost tau ish because like weren't they the same deal where it's like oh yeah you should join us or we'll kill you well they had a different concept they were more on the lines of <laughs> join us because it's for the greater good as a homogenous group for the white scars and for Jagatai, it was like you know it was like a lot of the mongolian stuff where it's join us because we're going to conquer you anyway or oh, okay. you'll die you right. know be part of our group because that's what we are we are we're nomads we're conquerors gotcha. okay. um so anyway then came biggie of course after well, he yeah, took over sure, the planet sure um he was actually <laughs> found by a fleet of luna wolves accompanied by both horus and biggie and Big E was looking at him and said, Damn, you conquered the whole planet in a very impressive way. That I like that. And <laughs> the Emperor basically offered him the same choice of, as his foes. You know, surrender or death, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Most people assume that Jagatai basically saw the Emperor and, and knelt immediately and, was, and said, Hey, Father, yes, you're here. I will, I will serve you. But in, in reality, if you actually, apparently in his journals... He wrote that it was quite a, a concept for him. He really? once he he does not like the idea of kneeling to anyone. That is I, I that's not he him. Because he he's he spent his whole life conquering and never kneeling, never surrendering, and just like killing his foes and never having to bend the knee. So yeah, I guess it it would be a little strange for him, but it is Big E, and I mean he is a. He's a presence. <laughs> he is a so. presence. In his journals, he wrote specifically that while he hates the concept of being under someone and having his legion under someone, or his men, I guess, in general, yeah. um, he, at the same time, realized that he was in the exact same situation he offered to everyone else. If I don't surrender, I will die. But he was also really pleased with the idea of the imperial truth. He followed the idea okay. of the Imperial Truth to a T, like mankind is destined to rule the galaxy. And right. if he would refuse Big E, that would mean death. And to accept it, even under a different banner, would mean a life of conquest. And that's something that he can very much get down with. That's true. He, he probably would love, love what he would do under the Emperor, so... Makes sense. Uh, it, it was interesting, too, because once he was brought on board, some people weren't entirely pleased with the concept of giving him his legion so quickly because he was living in, like, Renaissance time. That That's true. He, he was shitting in pots and, and you know... Like, <laughs> and then spacefaring emperor shows up and teleports down and... Yeah, like, here's your your du dudes clad in, in unbreakable armor with our yeah. warships. Like, that's... That's something. And some people were very much like, hey, no, we gotta, we shouldn't give Jagatai control of a whole legion this fast. You know, you know what people said that? What? Gilliman and Rogaldorn. <laughs> Who would have fucking guessed? <laughs> of course. Of course. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed that they were the ones who were like, mm, maybe we should train him more. But know that he got his legion regardless. He was given it. And at the time, a lot of the White Scars were actually, the, the Fifth Legion at the time, were out and about across the galaxy. They were all fighting different fights, just in different areas, doing whatever. And so his main goal was to actually round them all up. He had to go basically get out there and grab all of the White Scars, or I think they were called something prior to that, but it didn't last long. Um... And grabbing each of them and, and getting them all together and, and working them together into one homogenous group, very mm -hmm. similarly to the way he did on Trigoris. Right. Um, which was actually kind of a neat idea. Um, oh, they were called Star Hunters. That's right. Oh, um, that's that might be a oh, that's that, that, that's cool that's, that's, that's a more Scars, dope name. Actually. I think that Star Hunters. That's oh. actually a more dope name. I I agree. <sighs> Should have stayed Star Hunters. Like White Scar is cool, but fuck, dude. The White Scars. The reason that name came though was actually pretty neato. Uh, the idea okay. was that when he went to go gather up all of the, well, you know, White Scars, his yep. legion, 
The um, Star Hunters. The Star Hunters. Uh, once he was actually going out and gathering these like pioneer companies um, to attend him and bring them all together, what happened is he basically assembled the all of them above Chagoras, you know, his main planet, yeah. and he took all of them who were kind of not b big bros with each other. Mm -hmm. They were very suspicious of one another because they were all from different like companies, and now there's now the Primarchs here, and obviously they'll serve him, but between each other, they're all like it's almost like they're different tribes. Yeah. And so what he did was he in the big open fields, he took 50,000 warriors and did two <laughs> and did two things. He had them all take up their blades and uh, cut a mark in the flesh of their face, gouging like a, oh. a, a certain depth and a special pattern to the wound as like a ritual in a in way to uh, what's the term like pledge their loyalty, mark their loyalty. Uh -huh. And in the, their own different ways, so they would all have their own like tribes and bloodlines, mm -hmm. but literally, literally, yeah. but this specific like, well, this white scar would uh... end up being the the connective tissue that made them all together. Um, the second part of the ritual was that the scarring of uh, the the blood was supposed to be like they would choose after the the um, blood of the scarring was still bright they would choose completely new names completely discarding okay. the prior life in order to have them push back their prior uh, like tribes and such and therefore come into a homogenous group within the white scars oh that is actually pretty cool so it's almost like a rebirthing of like their community Basically, it's a rebirthing and a way where they still have kind of their, their culture with them, but now they're one big group with it. Oh, um, that's that's dope. That's a that's a that's a cool way to get your name, White Scar, because you've you've scarred your bloodlines and you're packed with your your legion right onto your face where everybody that's that's actually I'm okay with that over Star Hunters now. The, the concept is cool. Star Hunters yeah. is just really fucking neat, but... Yeah, and it goes with all the Star Wars we memes we've been making, too, so... That's true. We, yeah, if we're going to do Anacon memes, then this has got to continue. Yeah, um, definitely. As for the actual stuff that uh, the Khan did, he actually did a lot of pretty neat stuff. Uh, he helped create the Order Librarius, which basically was a special way to house psychers in Legions. Uh, him uh, originally it was mainly assumed that Magnus and Sanguinius was this did this thing, but Jagatai was part of it. It was okay. just basically like Magnus was like, "Hey, being a psyker is great. They should have unlimited potential and do whatever they want." And Ew. Sanguinius and and Jagatai were like, "No, nope. <laughs> let's not do that. That's really dangerous." Yeah. Uh... So they took them all together into like that's why they're called librarians. Because they, they had them house like a little group in each legion, the Librarius, to ha have them kind of train each other and test each other and making sure that they weren't just out and about. Yeah. Because that would so, be bad. Very bad. Psychers are creepy. Psychers are fucking weirdo. <laughs> Psychers are very weird. And <laughs> having space Gaunt's ring psychers. Like, ever since Gaunt's ghost, I'm just like, ooh, psychers. Ugh, ah, that makes my skin crawl. Ugh. Nasty ah. ass boys. Yeah, nasty ass fucking exorcist shit going on. Exorcist like <laughs> shit. Um, this actually caused some a little bit of a, a disconnect with a few other Primarchs. Now, the Khan didn't talk to many people, and some people didn't like him. Gilliman and, and Dornand in particular, of as course. well as Mortarian, really didn't like him. Uh, huh. Because he helped with the Psychers, and Mortarian really doesn't like Psychers. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Also, uh, they Rogaldorn and Gilliman didn't like his one wanton enjoyment of going fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> Why didn't they like that? Because it, Gilliman and Dorn want a classic drop pod strike. Followed by infantry with some tanks in the background and a slow pushing force that that <laughs> takes over the planet. And, and Jagatai and his boys are pulling 190 on jet bikes, swinging swords, and they're literally known as the Laughing Killers because they go into battle oh. with smiles on their faces and they're laughing their asses off when they kill people. 
They are they're riding at, at like subsonic or, or almost supersonic <laughs> on their fucking jet bikes, swinging their swords like mad, and they're just giggling to themselves the whole time. And not because they find it incredibly like satisfying, like um, well, Kurs, I guess, but like <laughs> Russ or anything. They they just love the honor of battle. And so they got a smile on their lips and a giggle under their helmet as they're just slapping people. I would have loved to have been there when the first White Scar got their motorcycle, like the first time they got to ride one. Because, like, they went from what? Horses? Back to, like, now mock speed bikes. Like, that first White Scar must have lost his fucking mind and just been blown off that bike. He would have had such a good time. He would have been so stoked. Probably. Like, he he probably, you know, flew off the bike and broke his neck, but he was having a blast for those three seconds. He wasn't flying through the air at thousands of miles an hour. I mean, yeah, there's also jet bikes. Let's not forget about that. That was pretty common in, in the Horus Heresy. They had, what, what, oh. what happens if you have a bike and instead your bike can fly? Oh, my God. I didn't realize they had jet bikes. I thought they were. Well, I guess it's 40K. Of course, they have jet bikes. That, that should have made sense. But I, that's those are really dope, too. Yeah, those are old 30K jet bikes. The custodians actually still still run with jet bikes. But um, they also have like land speeders, mm -hmm. which are also a, a big do. white scar thing. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course, because they're. Oh, no, the land speed looks like a pod, too. Mm -hmm. No, could have could be a return of the Jedi literal land speeder. You know, they're boom. Yeah, shit yeah. but yes we're, they like that stuff quite hard a bit. in on star wars man they, Dude, like it's seeming more and more like the white scar is just a very subtle star wars meme which is weird though because jacket mongolian stuff is not very like star i mean i guess star wars does have the eastern influence like they have the jedi are like monks mixed with uh like knights in, in a way but i always thought the jedi were more uh samurai based well, th th I mean, their robes with, like, are very, their they're very monkish. That's true. Like a monk cross with a samurai. It, it's it's a it's a con it's a combination of like the East monks, the the sword samurai combined with like the West, which is knights and because uh, they're Jedi knights and that kind of stuff. Oh so. well, fair, yeah. It's like a nice combination. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yes, they like to go really fast. In a sense, they think, why would I care what my enemy's tactics are when I can blow through their gates moving at such insane speeds and now they're fighting me on multiple fronts and they can barely fight me? Because I am an Astartes. I have way better reaction time. I am way stronger. And now I am way faster than you. And often they'll just go in there and have like total Blitzkrieg mm -hmm. and cause so, much, so many problems that the rest of their forces will either clean up or some other force, like the Imperial Fists, will do the rest of the dirty work. You know what would suck about fighting the White Scar? It's like, oh my god, they, they've got these bikes, it's unfair, they go so fast, oh, this is so stupid. If you if you manage to, like, blow out the tire on one of their bikes, or blow out the engines, like, hooray, I got them off their bike! It's like, congratulations, now you've got an Astartian full of power armor to deal with, and it's like... Fuck! And he is sprinting at you. <laughs> yeah, and he's it's like, ah, oh, damn it. I got rid of the bike at least. It's like, congrats. You're still uh, dead. <laughs> often they they employ a lot of people with jetpacks too, which is also oh, like, well, you know, good times. Yeah, in in the tabletop, they're also really fast. And that makes well, them they should be. Yeah. yeah, that makes them quite frightening sometimes. Uh, Are they popular you, in the tabletop? Like, do a lot of people use them? Uh, they're they're pretty good right now because they have um, uh, they they have a special ability. So their ability is they can do a thing called advance and charge. Mm -hmm. Basically, when you move like if a bike moves twelve inches, you can then advance a, a unit, which is you roll a dice and then add that many inches to its movement. So if you roll a six, then it's an eighteen inch bike. But normally, Ooh. if you do that, you're foregoing shooting or oh. uh, or charging. But they can charge after it anyway. So they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> They're literally, literally just Tokyo drifting. They're going the real fast. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have, they get extra damage on their melee in like a certain part of the game. So they're flying at you. It's super fast and doing extra damage. It's pretty crazy. The problem is that they're all in white and painting white is the worst thing in the world. That is true. From, from what little I've painted, like you would think painting white stuff is just super easy. It's not. 
It's yes. so hard. It's so chalky and Because you don't just paint white. Like, you've got to, like, do all, like, the little shading of it, and then it seems like it's too white, and then it's, like, you try and do a little gray, and it's, like, the gray's too... It's a fucking nightmare. It is. It, it's... I, mm, I hate it. I hate painting cloth. Just white cloth is the fucking worst. I agree with that one. White cloth is the worst. Mm. Uh, anyway, so Khan's doing Khan things. He's doing his Great Crusade. He's really enjoying it. But a lot of people tended to not really pay the white scars any mind. They were really? they were very much just like they, they weren't a huge legion size wise, uh -huh. but often because of their tactics, they were either kind of disliked, but also the Khan had no interest in doing honorable, glorious battle. Gilliman, oh. Dorn, the Lion, all these like Russ, they really enjoyed they love to gloat. Well, maybe I mean Gilliman a little less. Maybe he just likes to do yeah. bookkeeping. But he's, they he's love the to be boy. they love to be known for their actions. They love to to have their praises sung. And the Khan didn't care. And the White Scars, in a sense, didn't care about that. They cared about the actual battle. Though at the same time, because of that, everyone just kind of forgot about them. They they just kind of <laughs> forgot that the White Scars were around very okay. often because of that and it actually pissed a lot of them off pissed a lot of the white scar off right because yeah. they're being forgotten even though they're like fighting as hard harder maybe and they're actually winning battles and they're doing just as well and it's like oh you're gonna fucking forget me fuck you yeah but like <laughs> the, but at the same time they never like they got really annoyed but they never yeah. changed their way of war they literally yeah. did the exact same thing and they, they never tried to be more gloaty. They never once right. changed the way they fought in order to be known better. They they hated that no one cared about them and, and no one gave them any mind. Yeah. But at the same time, they didn't change their morals, which is actually pretty pretty admirable. Yeah. If it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Which is humorous because the white scars. I may have said this before, but now that I've read this, I might say it again. There's there's a lot of factors that go into the Horus Heresy. I think the white scars may have been the biggest change in the entire heresy. I do vaguely remember them having a big role to play in the heresy. I don't remember if it was they were one of the few loyalists that were guarding Terra. That is and correct. They, and they were holding off uh, hordes of chaos and they were doing it pretty fucking well. The, the thing is, is that they it was unsure which side they would go on. You know, as as you were talking about them getting no respect and them getting forgotten, I was like, man, that seems like <laughs> that seems like if somebody offered them a better job, <coughs> chaos, uh, they might just take it since nobody was respecting them and they were all just kind of forgetting they were there and Rogel Dorn and Gilliman are being kind of bitches about uh, the way they fight. It's possible. I, I could see loyalists, legions being like, mm, yeah. Mm. I mean, that was kind of the Iron Warriors, but it was also the fact that Daddy gave the the fun job to Dorn, and Percherabo did not like that, which is one of the reasons why I call him a petulant man child. <laughs> okay, I'm um, I'm sure I'll I'll be able to piece this all together when we do uh, Iron Warriors. Yeah, I I'm, I'm sure we will. But mm -hmm. um, so that. It's kind of funny because as I was reading this, I thought to myself, how funny is it that everyone forgets about the White Scars? And then in lore, everyone forgets about the White Scars. Mm -hmm. But not only that, <laughs> because they were one of the biggest factors in the Horus Heresy, they are literally, now that the barbarians are at the door, you have the audacity to come to me for help while I was studying the blade. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're literally that meme. They're like, you want you paid me no mind this whole time, but now that Horus is there, now you want my help, huh? They're actually I studied the blade meme. I can't they fucking are. believe they actually are that. They are. They're Star Wars and uh, I studied the blade. Well done, so, White Scars. It's just a plethora of memes. They're full of memes and everyone yeah. forgets about them, which is sad. Poor guys. They're so cool though. God. They're really, they are really cool. I don't know how hard they went in the Mongolian stuff back in the day. I don't, I don't know if they kind of like cultured them up in the last ten years or so, but well, it's pretty got, cool. They've got jet bikes and motorcycles. I mean, that's it's not really a Mongolian thing. They they did kind of doll them up a little bit. Well, the Mongolians were very 
quick. You know, they they came on their horses and they had true, lots of cavalry. True, and true, I'm assuming yeah. that's where they went that way. But mm -hmm. anywho, uh, all this stuff going on, yada yada. There's lots of battles that I'm skipping over because this is the con episode. Yeah, um, sure. But when we got to the heresy itself, this is when things actually started to take a really interesting turn. So after a bit. The White Scars were on, they were like a five year war with the Orcs. Whoa. Like a so long it, ass war. Was, was this like an actual war? Cause it's a war. Was it an actual war campaign that the Orcs were launching? Or was it just uh, a separate little uh, offensive against maybe just a planet that was getting overrun with Orcs? My mind tells me that it was a war, but it was a five year war. It was a long ass war. Mm -hmm. um, they they were it was going on for quite a while. They they were dealing with a bunch of orc problems. It was a pretty seriously long campaign. I'm assuming it took five years. It was probably a war, yeah. but regardless, they were in like fighting off these orcs for a long ass time. And then what happened at this point was that during this situation, he actually was getting an order from Horus, and oh. Horus said, "Hey, Russ." has turned traitor and driven by his hatred for Magnus the Red has utterly decimated the Thousand Sons. Oh. Which, as you might rem remember, Khan was kind of chill with Magnus. Yeah. And, oh. and they said that, that Magnus had actually died by Russ's hands. Mm -hmm. And that Which was... Didn't, but yeah, sure. No, that was, it didn't, but that was kind of weird. And if you remember the ruin storm that Erebus created way back when, mm -hmm. uh, this was starting to make lots of astropath communication really confusing to the White Scars. At first, it was that thing from Horus, but then he got another report from Rogel Dorn that said, return to Terra as soon as possible to defend the, the homeworld against traitors along with me and Russ. Me and Russ oh. are defending are defending Terra. Get here now. And so that was confusing. Yeah. And and then he was they were ordered the White Scars were ordered to reinforce the Alpha Legion that were currently being attacked <laughs> by the Iron Hands because Ferris Manus had killed Fulgrim. Ooh. And then the Mars and the Mechanicum were in full revolt against the Emperor. Oh man, that's a that's a lot. This is all coming in at the same time, and Ooh, it was boy. and Jagatai did the one thing no other fucking Primarch would ever do, and he waited. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. Think about this clearly. The bike boys, the waited. speed demons, <laughs> waited and thought it out. What an absolute yeah. big dick man this guy is to be like, hmm, I should think about this. Yeah, it's it, and it's so uncharacteristic, too, because like you said, they're all about like moving fast, get to the battle, 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 pride in the battle, pride in the fight. But I mean, I guess when you have so much conflicting information and none of it makes sense, I guess really the smartest thing you can do is just wait that shit out, right? Because you don't want to like, oh, yeah, let's... Let's let's uh, I, I literally got something from the war master that said Russ is a fucking traitor. I'm getting something from Dorn saying that they're actually not traitor and they're trying to defend. It's like, fuck all of it. We're just going to sit here. Wait it out. It's a surprisingly, out. surprisingly smart thing to do for someone that is seems very gung ho to get to a fight. Shy, did you make that image right now? Oh, no, or was that did you find a like, God damn it, Shy? I can't believe you went out of your way to make that goddamn meme. <laughs> <laughs> when you were having premarital sex, I mastered the jet bike. <laughs> you know, I got I got to be honest. It's a good thing the white scars don't have premarital sex because they 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 come a little fast. What did you say? Oh, for Pete's sake! Dun, dun, oh, stop! Yeah, okay. You get you get the you get the drum on that. You I'll, give, take the, I'll take the, the drum. Give him the drum set. Yeah. She made that drum. meme during the episode. As far as I'm concerned, I get I get to do yeah. that. We're over here being as professional as can be, and Shy's over here making memes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, <laughs> then he received a communication from Russ, and said, 
Alpharius Omegon is beating my sphincter in. <laughs> okay. Because after the fight on Prospero, the Alpha Legion came to fuck up the Space Wolves because they were really wounded and like, help me, yeah. Jagatai. And Jagatai said, I am not picking sides right now. I don't know what's going on. Best of luck, Russ. <laughs> I'm going to figure out what's happening. Good luck, dude. And then he bailed. And well, so what happened is actually he went to depart from the system he was at with all the orcs. Mm -hmm. And then they encountered that gigantic Alpha Legion flotilla that you remember from the Alpha Legion episode. Oh, right, 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 right. And the Alpha Legion was not responding to any hails. And uh... quietly, they were accumulating more warships. And as the and it, and they were on the far side of the, of the of like the planet or whatever the area the system, and whenever the white scars would move their ships, the Alpha Legion would mirror them. Um, whatever they would do, the Alpha Legion would do the same. Damn, they they gave it away. They they would do exactly the identical, well, uh, an identical like motion. Yeah. But Khan was confused because they knew the Alpha Legion were full trickery assholes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they realized the Alpha Legion was not threatening them, but they weren't there as a friend either. Mm -hmm. And it was this really bizarre, quiet game of back and forth until eventually Dorn finally got a major message through to the Khan explaining what was going on. But at the same time, the Alpha Legion had a feeling, or the, the, the Khan had a feeling that the Alpha Legion wanted Doran's communication to arrive. They wanted them to go back to Terra mm -hmm. because that was, that was their overall goal was to get the White Scars out. Sure. So this this was a big game of cat and mouse for a while, which actually sounds really intense. That I bet it was pretty great in the books, and I wish I had read that. Um, yeah. But long story short, eventually the White Scars deemed it to, to leave. Um, and they did that by like blowing their engines at full speed and outrunning the Alpha Legion. They just dipped. <laughs> He's like, yeah. bye bye. <laughs> if anybody's gonna outrun you, it's it's gonna be the White Scar. Um, yeah, the the Alpha Legion didn't really fire on them much, and they got out rather uh, unscathed. Which is another question of was the Alpha Legion actually? traitor you know. or were they actually loyalists yeah we don't know they, what was going on there they kind of just they kind of just let them through and them letting them through is kind of a big deal and, it is so eventually they went to go try to seek answers to see what was going on mm -hmm. so they actually went over to prospero to find magnus and see what the hell was going on because he only ever oh. trusted magnus oh boy <laughs> yeah when they when they reached there they're like oh my god Where's Prospero? It's gone. It's fucking dead. It's burned yeah. to the ground. All the pyramids are gone. Yeah. Where's Magnus? Uh, they, they actually end up speaking to like an apparition of Magnus. Oh, really? A bit. Okay. Um, there's a lot here on his search for the truth that like there's a lot here. Mm -hmm. Um, I would probably read the book in this situation because holy shit. <laughs> Um, though, if there's one thing that I do really want to talk about, because I think it's probably the most important part of the Calm era, I want to talk about him and Mortarium. Okay. Because we're at 50 minutes or so in this episode already, and I don't want to take it too long, and we also have a White Scars episode after this anyway. Sure. But this, he had a dialogue with Mortarian that might be the, probably my favorite exchange in the Horus Heresy stuff. Okay. This is, it's pretty neat. All right, um, all right. So eventually in Prospero, Mortarian arrived and he was saying, what's up to the Khan? Uh, obviously Mortarian right now is very much traitor. <laughs> um, and he <laughs> teleported in to, uh, into the, um, I think they were either standing on Prospero or they're on the ships. I don't really remember. I think they may have been on Prospero, but wherever they were, either that or on a, on a flagship, whatever, whatever spot they were in. Um, he teleported on there along with his elite bodyguard, which are known as the Death Shroud, which... Boy, that's cool. <laughs> I, I, I gotta show you this because, like, the Death Shroud Terminators are fucking dope. Whoa! 
Holy shit. They are really dope. And not Whoa. only are they really dope, but their minis are really dope. Those are way cooler than regular Terminators. They they are, have shit. giants. They have giant sides known as man reapers and like purple capes. Um, they're, they're really cool, man. That's see. This is why I love Chaos so much more than like Loyalist. Like the Loyalist Terminators look fine, but they're like these big blocky things. And then you look at the Chaos shit, and it's like holy, ah, oh, it's so, ah, oh, it's so much better. It's so much more interesting. <laughs> Oh, God. Also, I'm surprised that Jagged Icon couldn't smell these motherfuckers coming a mile away. Oh, they, they teleported in. <laughs> oh, right, right. Still, I'm surprised you couldn't smell them from orbit, though. I mean, like... There you go. That's guys. better. <laughs> there you go. Well, okay. don't forget Mortarian was there. He probably smelled him True. next to the like, solar yep. system away. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, he teleported in, and they ended up having a, a wonderful conversation. And... This is a, a really interesting part because Mortarian was there to convince him. Uh, he was to convince like him to join to turn traitor. Mm -hmm. Um he after this time he, he specifically stated, quote, I have plenty to tell you, Jagatai. There are opportunities here. The cost of error has never been higher, and the rewards beyond imagination. Um they were doing a little bit of a back and forth. Mm -hmm. Um and so the con was kind of kind of being blunt. He's like, say what you've come to say, Mortari. And Mortari kind of did like a, a mocking bow to him. <laughs> and it's like, I have I have come here to uh what was it? Like he said you were not meant to be here. You were meant to join the Alpha Legion on Alaxis. Mm -hmm. And Khan said, or you know, return to Terra. And Mortari said, well, we didn't wish that. Why would we? And, as the Alpha Legion held us at Chondix. They wanted us to hear from Dorn. And he's like, oh, really? You surprised me. Or perhaps you shouldn't. It seems that Alpharius is never wholly of one mind. <laughs> he plays a dangerous <laughs> game. Like, ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha, indeed. He's like, so why you? And why not me, brother? It's like, I assumed it would be Horus. He's like, ah, vanity. He has many things to keep him busy. And so he's like, Horus didn't send you, did he? And it's like, that means nothing. It's like, it means everything. Magnus told me how the war stands. Some souls are still to be decided on. There were always those of us on edge. I was one of them, and you were another. So it was two people who were kind of wishy-washy talking yeah. to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so Mortarian states... They said, uh, all of this led by Horus, and he's kind of shrugged. So he's mm -hmm. the start, he's the champion, the sacrificial king. He may burn himself out to get to Terra, he may not. Either way, there will be room for others to rise. You should never have thrown your lot in with the angel, brother, let alone Magnus. I hated to see it, the three of you, getting dragged in deeper. I always thought you'd break away, see through it, get tired of the hypocrisy. Khan responds, responds, they were never hypocrites. He's like, no, I hoped you would understand them sooner. It's the warp, Jagatai. Our father tried to pretend it wasn't there as if he weren't already up to his elbows in the soul-sucking filth. <laughs> it should have been cordoned off, put away, forgotten about. It's not for us. It's a sickness and a blight. And so naturally, Mortarian's like, I don't like the warp, sir. <laughs> sure you don't. Sure, sure. Um, oh. so Mortarian uh, with their little, you know, go back and forth. I don't want to read the whole thing because it's quite long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Khan says, but it's gone wrong. Hasn't it? You have completed your great mission, but there are more sorcerers than ever. Horus has sponsored them. Lorgar has shown them new tricks. If Magnus has not already made up his mind, then he soon will. And you will be surrounded. You've destroyed the Librarius only to find the witches are now untrammeled. They played you well. You are you have done their work for them, and soon you will be dragged into it yourself, as warp sick as they are. Now, I see it perfectly. Magnus has showed me your legion may be free of it for now, but the change will come. You've made your packs, and now they will come to collect. You fool. And that is why you came to me. You've run out of friends. Who will stand with you against the ether weavers now? 
Angron, what an ally. Kurz, <laughs> good luck. You've tasted the fruits of treachery and found them bitter. Don't drag me into your ruin. You're on your own, brother. Oh, fuck. He fucking just <laughs> incinerates him with words. Damn. That's like a bolter shell to the heart. Damn. He fucked him up. And th um, this is one of my more favorite things that he says is, I came to give you a choice, Mortarian said, keeping his voice under some control. Half your legion have already declared for Horus. The others will follow whenever you order them. Our father's time is over. You can be a part of the order that replaces him. And the Khan smiled and said, quote, a new emperor. Because that was the idea. Jagatai is like, dad has problems. Fuck yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. I, I get tired of lost shit. No one gave me any mind. But Horus will just be another big E. Yeah. If he even will. makes it. You know, you're you've come to me for help because you're surrounded by witches and you you tasted tre treachery and you don't like it. You, the yeah. only boys that are with you that don't like sorcerers are Angron and Kurz. <laughs> what allies? Great <laughs> allies. Yeah, real slick. There, that, that's going to be uh, helpful assets. Yeah. Oh, boy. The last words they said to each other before they started beating the shit out of one another <laughs> was... Of Mortarian says, then you will not be persuaded. A shame. I invested much energy to save you, brother, and I shall take no pleasure in your destruction. And Khan says, that's the difference between us. By the time I kill my enemies, I am always smiling. Oh. Whoa, and then they and then they whoa. beat the shit out of each other, and then Mortarian's like, gotta go, bye, and then teleports away. <laughs> well, at least you tried, right? At least hey, you you tried. Good, good work. Um, I, uh, I, there's a part of me that was, uh, I know, I know they don't go chaos, but I would love to see what a chaos white scar looked like. And I don't like, know if like a small part of them did. I thought a small could, portion of them did, but I don't quite remember. I would love, love to see like how cool they would look if they had like, the influence of chaos on them and their and their bikes and well, like would they get turned into like fucking transformers you know and be able to turn <laughs> into <laughs> they're like they're like demonly merged with their bikes exactly like they're actually like the bike and they can like transform into it and then transform out of it into like an astartes like crazy looking motherfucker oh that'd be cool also i didn't realize on the 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 uh the death guard terminators they have little tentacles that come out and wrap around the scythe too, and it's very creepy. It's, oh yeah, the the know, death shroud terminators. Yeah, they look disgusting. They have the tentacles come out and help them wield the scythe. That's very gross. I don't. Oh boy. Uh, not a fan. Uh, not a fan because it's gross, but at the same time, it's really fucking cool. It is. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, funny enough, like when you talked about going into someone's armor, there's actually a chaos model. I will show you now called an obliterator. Um, this guy, it's kind of like oh. he kind of <laughs> kind of grew into his armor in a weird way, like his muscles oh. are kind of bulging out. Yeah, you can see um, his muscles coming out of his arms, his shoulder, his thigh. Damn. Yeah, that, that thing is really nasty and, and weird, but it's also kind of has that that vibe to it where um, imagine if he kind of broke his way out like that, but into white scar like like a bike. Yeah, that'd be like great. like maybe like lots of little tentacle feet beneath the bike that can like run really fast or something. I don't know, just some Ugh. just some yeah. creepy shit like that. Yep, that's that's not the thigh fetish that uh, most people want. Um, I have uh, I have plenty of thigh great. fetishes and yeah, that's and, not and the that's not the one I'm looking for. No sir, nope, nope that's not that guilty gear uh, thigh physics. That's uh, well, I mean there's there's thigh physics, but not that's that's like monkey paw. Like, oh man, I wish there were more. I wish there were more thighs in 40k and the monkey paw curls. Oh no, it curls. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, here's an obliterator. Oh no. <laughs> so not the, the These so aren't stupid. the thighs you were looking for. <laughs> These are not the thighs. More Star Wars. <laughs> more Star Wars. You got to you got to got to keep with the theme. Um, <laughs> but at the end uh with through after the conversation and all, that was I don't. I think that Jagatai already kind of made up his mind prior to that, but he was, yeah. you know, this is obviously where he's fully loyal. Yeah. And 
the Khan ended up, of course, making his way back to Terra and was instrumental in the defense of Terra along with Rogel Dorg. He was hugely important. Yeah. Yep. In fact, so much so that I actually believe that the Khan and Dorne were the people that helped carry the Emperor to the Golden Throne after his uh, clo close demise. I think he was also teleported onto the Vengeful Spirit with Horus. Yeah, I, um, I, I remember I remember something like that. I remember he was very pivotal, and uh, he was... Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think he did help carry uh, the Emperor to the Golden Throne and do a lot of that. It was him and, him and Dorne shape. had the Emperor mm -hmm. in, like, a shoulder reach or something. Yeah. Um, that being said, that was kind of the end for Jagatai for a while, because, of course, the Horus Heresy ended. Uh, but then we come to the part that's kind of dumb and I don't like. Uh, uh, after some time... Later, after the Horus Heresy, there was just like yada yada things going on. He went back to Chagoris and he was like, Oh my god, the Jukari are taking all my people for slaves. And uh -oh. then he fought the Jukari for like 70 years, trying to kill a shitload of Jukari. And then at some point, he chased the Jukari really fast in his goddamn bike into the webway, and he was never seen again. Oh, what? That's That's it? Well, I mean, he's probably alive. He's out there somewhere, but we just don't know. Most oh. most Primarchs that are loyalists just kind of disappeared. Like, nine oh. of them just are gone. And that's one of the things where GW kind of had to do this thing where they needed a reason for them to not be around. And what? so his is, he wanted Eldar booty, and he's gone. <laughs> he wanted to kill all the Eldar that were ravaging his homeworld. Why did the Primarchs have to be gone? Uh, because Primarchs are really important and makes it sadder with heresy. And, you know, Dorne is presumed dead. Uh, Gilliman was in stasis for now. Now he's not. The Lion is asleep. Corvus Korax is in the warp. Lehman Russ is in the warp. Jagatai Khan is in the webway. You know, huh. Ferris Manus is dead. Vulcan oh, is, yeah. is somewhere. I don't fucking know what's up with Vulcan now. He, he's waiting at his respawn timer. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. Did, did you make that up? Just just now. Just made That's it up. That's fantastic. Yep. Vulcan's <laughs> waiting for respawn. Hey, he's waiting for the respawn timer. You know in like a MOBA or something when you die and it's yeah. like more times you die. Just, he's yeah, he's waiting on his respawn timer. He's got an hour long game and his respawn timer's gotten really long right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, really god damn. Long. He's been around for centuries. That respawn timer's got to be through the fucking roof, dude. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. That's good. That's fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, everyone's very... Everyone's very much, like, just kind of gone, and so is Jagatai, and that kind of sucks. Um, yeah. He was, he's definitely a more prominent option to bring back, if you're going to, like, I want to bring back a, a Primarch. Mm -hmm. Him and, I'd say, the Lion are probably the best choices. Yeah. Because um, the Lion's just literally just asleep. <laughs> he's just taking a nap somewhere, just... Man, just boy, napping. that Horus Heresy really took it out of me. I'm going to go take a cat nap. It's kind, been 1,000 years. It's been 10,000 years. 10,000 years late there. It's the one SpongeBob meme I know. Oh, yeah, just the narrator in general. Yeah, yeah, just the X amount of years later. That's that's it. Sorry. But that's mostly the con. He's cool. pretty neato. And, yeah, like, his whole upbringing is kind of boring. But his actual, like, coming around how he dealt with the heresy, how he waged war. Mm -hmm. um, it is canonical to forget about him. Aww. <laughs> Which is unfortunate, <laughs> but he's pretty cool. For, yeah. for the the kid, I said say the kid, but the, the, young, the young upstart, the guy with not the biggest legion out there, and the guy that was always forgotten about made some of the largest and most important changes in the Horus Heresy. Without the Khan, there's a good chance that Rogel Dorn and the Fists would have been outnumbered. Yeah. And that would have been the end of it all. But, yeah. alas. Alas. Which, it, man. Now I'm really starting to think that the uh, the Alpha Legion really are playing both sides. Because if the Alpha Legion had, like, stood their ground a little bit, fought the White Scar for a little bit, and just bought some time, maybe buying that time, you know... Horus can take over Terra, and White Scars don't get back in time, and you know you would you would hope. Yeah. So. And, and then it was just kind of like 
eh, eh, and they, well, yeah, they, they let him go. Yeah, and so here we are. So anyway, shall I take us out? Yeah, take us home, Country Roads. Country Roads. It's a brick. On Bricky and everywhere. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, of course, you can find me Bricky everywhere. Streams, YouTube, etc., etc. DK. DK Diamantes everywhere. YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, nah, fuck yeah, and yeah. you can find Shy at Quite Shallow, Quite Shy. Uh, episode over. Cut. Goodbye. What? <laughs>